Our base. Welcome back, Commander. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If the last two missions seemed like fun, short little adventures, well, this one isn't. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's a lot that makes this level in particular tough and or long, but, I mean, we've got plenty of time to get to it eventually. Yes, sir. The first thing to point out is that when you start, you've got at least two mana tanks up top. You've got a couple other units spread across the road. Mostly those you can just completely forget about. The main thing you want to do is micromanage the hell out of those mana tanks. They're incredibly valuable. We've already seen that they can regenerate HP, so having them do their thing here is just paramount. The orcas that are available at the start aren't particularly useful. I don't really care for them, um, mostly because you can see a couple recon bikes here and there, as well as some rocket infantry. And considering our low amount of funds, I don't really know what's going to happen in the future. Do I really want to waste, you know, uh, such important units? Once again, we see the Apache come in. It has no real effect on vehicles. Probably light, lightly armored ones, sure, but the main point of having a... about using them at all is really just so you can get rid of clumps of rocket soldiers if you can get to them without them shooting at you, but more specifically engineers or grenadiers. I believe the MCV is set on a time delay rather than anything else, although I haven't yet gone into the code of the level to, just to see what the specifics are. Now this level does a thing where it sort of funnels you to the bottom of, of the map. Uh, obviously that's intentional. Um, there's no real reason for the player not to go there, although it will cause issues that we'll see later on in the video. You know, I never noticed that the smoke effect doesn't actually get cloaked, so if you can ever get uh, a still tank to at least yellow, you're kind of guaranteed to know where it is. If it looks like I'm being weird with mammoth tanks, it's because I'm really trying to force turrets to look away, just so I can get rockets when they turn around. Someone mentioned in the thread a long time ago that if the turret has to turn more than 90 degrees, it'll shoot rockets. Yes, sir. It didn't seem to be the case there, so I wonder if maybe there's something else at play. Another thing that uh, I should point out is that uh, it's very common to see a trigger in a level like this um, that says production, and that basically is what like allows uh, usually the AI side rather than the player side um, get to do stuff, like actually start making things. It's kind of important because certain levels are like designed around that um, although I say certain but I 
believe there might only be like one or two. Uh, in any case, the point is, is that um, if you happen to trigger, like if there's a trigger there, which obviously you can't see, nothing explains, like nothing's ever explained um, when it comes to the triggers. Just because there's no like message functionality or nothing shows up on screen. Alright, I got cut off there. Um, so again, there's no, like, other than revealing line of sight, like, the, the game's code does not allow it to, like, move the player's camera to a designated location. Not as far as I know, anyway. So, you kind of, um, kind of have to intuit a lot. Um, that being said, again, there's a limitation. So, you don't know when the AI starts producing. So, if you happen to walk over a special zone and you trigger the AI's production, let's say if, if the, when the MCV gets on the map, well, that just means that if the longer it takes me to get my MCV to its like designated zone, where like it's the game's like telling me I should build a base. If I don't get it there fast enough, that's just more time that the AI has had to build up anything it's going to throw at me. Which obviously is problematic. Uh, another thing that's rather problematic is me losing a mammoth tank like really early. Ultimately, it's not a game changer. The mammoth tank is good, but it's not like it's irreplaceable. It just sucks because it's a. Uh, you know, it's a costly unit. Oh, and this is going to be another level where you just watch a cargo plane fly over your base, taunting you, teasing you what's with what's available to the enemy forces. Now, I will say I don't necessarily dislike this map. Um, again, I think one of the huge improvements that this, like all the expansions have been doing, have been to give you an actual amount of money. Like you, I don't feel like I'm always cash starved. Obviously, there's you know the odd exception here or there, but for the most part, we've seen maps with tons of Tiberium. And it really shows, I think, uh, the large contrast between um, first release and expansion release. Maybe there was a lot of feedback from players that complained about it. Maybe there was something else at play. Regardless, it's nice to see the change. But speaking of the map itself, uh, you'll note that there's quite a few defenses to the left of our base, and it kind of makes any sort of like end game mining directly here very problematic. If you've been watching this LP since the start, it's particularly obvious to see that the um, harvesters have a very limited um, sort of way of thinking. They go out on their own and do their own thing, and obviously that's super helpful because you're cutting down on micromanagement. The issue with it, however, is that because the harvesters do their own thing, unannounced and, and more, most likely like unbeknownst to the player, because you're usually not tracking all your harvesters. Um, but the problem lies in that they go for the closest field. And obviously if there's a field that's been depleted nearby, it'll jump to the next closest one, and so on. Sometimes it's less about um, how close it is in terms of drive path, as it seems to be just distance. I'm not entirely sure what the limiting factor is, but something's at play. 
Now, uh, in the thread, I posted, like, I was, like, very mad after I had to play this level. Not because, like, again, it's not that I dislike this level. There's just things about it that I wish were different. Um, but this is, this is what I had to deal with. A incredibly long slog. Um, and I want to show it because, I mean, look, nobody, uh, nobody else has, has gone to covert ops on the essay forums. Uh, it'll probably be like that either forever or at least a very long time. Um, and like, screw getting to all the multiplayer levels, like, that's, that I won't show. That you guys can just figure it out on your own if you want. Um, but yeah, so I had this, I had to speed up the footage or else it would have taken me, like, Nobody wants to sit here for, for that one. Anyways, so we can see that the AI is basically going to be doing the same thing over and over and over again, which is to throw a lot of engineers at you and a lot of smaller groups of units. You usually just hum V's and recon bikes, sometimes spiced it up with some light tanks and like maybe an SSM launcher. That usually doesn't happen. Now, uh, as the briefing said, the um, NOB forces were able to gain control of a GDI base, base in the area. What they don't say is that in addition to a GDI base, they also captured a comm center, which means they get airstrikes. Naturally, if you built anything to generate your own airstrikes, uh, that would kind of maybe sort of need to wait for you to clear out all SAM sites on the map. Yeah, it's another one of those. Uh, I can easily say that if this game allowed you to do, like, both teams to have airstrikes, it would make this level, like, way more bearable. Uh, just because there's a couple things that we'll see uh, throughout the map that just are more, like, annoying from a design standpoint. Mainly that the small GDI base has like a lot of defenses for what it is, and that also includes an obelisk of light. Now I'm sure, you know, the quote unquote pro move is to get a lot of orcas and then use the orcas to do whatever. Um, only problem I have is that while orcas are nice and all, it's still a huge investment of cash, and there is a SAM site like right next to it. So, I don't know, I'm not particularly keen on, on doing anything with it. Now we can see that uh, there's quite a few Tiberium fields that are getting low. The AI seems to have a healthy field still right outside its base. So you kind of have to start weighing your options on what you're going to try and do. Uh, as always, you want to bait out the airstrike as much as you can because, well, that's just the smart move. I had to reload like a lot of times, which they're usually cut, um, like right there. Well, not cut, but reloaded. Now I was really hoping that by capturing the power plant, the obelisk of light would have shut down. Unfortunately, it seems Nod forces uh, have quite enough extra power. Yeah, this is even faster than the previous speed up, if you were wondering. It just... It just takes forever sometimes. Um, once again, I had to resort to sandbags. I don't know how you're supposed to have enough money to... Like, constantly bear down on the enemy forces. And sandbags, honestly, was the only way I could think of doing this. Uh, this is also a, a legitimate problem. Um, 
because of the limitations on how much money I have and where I can go, the harvesters would just automatically go into locations that I had no control over. And unfortunately, the sandbag trick, while it works, uh, and I'm forever grateful that that is an actual tool that exists, um, the problem is, is that there's a second exit out of the not base. And I, I cut a lot of time in this. I didn't realize it for quite some time. Uh, I just figured maybe they just had like a secondary base or whatever. Um, and then uh, eventually it dawned on me that there's a, another location, but you know, damage is done basically. Uh, so they, again, that that's the issue with um, harvesters is that they'll go to locations that you don't necessarily like want them to, and it causes more issues than than resolves. Uh, another thing I, I discovered, well, I shouldn't say discovered, I'm sure that like people have known this for a long, long time. Um, Humvees are probably the best thing to bait out an airstrike with. Even if an APC is like marginally faster, uh, it's not, like in the end, it's not worth it. Um, the Humvee costs a lot less. You can just, like, you don't have to feel bad if you get, if you lose a Humvee rather than an APC. Now I don't think there's anything special with destroying uh, that middle GDI quote unquote base. Um, it was just something for me to do really. Another thing I got like really good at doing was um, basically getting an orca to fly near the SAM site just to pop it out so it could take extra damage and then just flying it away. It seemed to be pretty consistent when I tried it, so hey, that was a thing. So there's another reason why um, Harvesters, it just like it just shows that harvesters are, are limited. And yeah, I'm cheesing it, but you know what? I don't really care at this point. <laughs> I just I had to do it. I, I just had to 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 wall them off both ways. Um, but here's an example as to how harvesters can just be too stupid for their own good. Even though I have Tiberium fields in my in my own base. Uh, and obviously there's the limitation of, like, I had to actually, like, I rolled them in, so the AI has got to put its units somewhere. So unfortunately that means that it had to put them in an area where they could shoot at any of my harvesters that would try to get into the nearest Tiberium field. So to prevent them from automatically going there, I had to kind of fix this, a thing or two. Also, do you think that's a dick move? I do. This is just another one of those things where I, I feel like the developers, like, the nuke comes out of nowhere, you know what I mean? And I'm sure it's like hard-coded in to be at like a specific time or whatever. Uh, but it's still more or less. Annoying. So we're gonna do two things to rectify not only the AI being a jerk and like kicking my ass, uh, but we're also going to figure out a way to get rid of the nuke problem. Yeah, this is kind of a rough, a rough cut of how my games progress. I mean, if you think this is a little lame, um, I don't disagree. Uh, but at the same time, I, the game doesn't play fair, so I, d I don't feel like I should either. Eventually I smarten up though, and I 
just make a save closer to my end goal. Which I'm sure somebody like is probably screaming at the screen about. There we go. Like it only takes me like five times, and then I learn. But I learn eventually. So, I've locked the AI into its own base, because it can't figure out the sandbag thing. And, uh, for the record, like, after after Tiberium Dawn, and obviously Covert Ops along with it, there's the Westwood fixed the sandbag problem, so uh, that will no longer be an issue. Um, so yeah, Nod now has nukes. I, I think this may be a factor of um, because you took over the GDI base, or the quote-unquote outpost, or whatever, I don't know. Um, whether or not that's the actual like trigger, all you gotta do is my lovely uh, design in the middle, middle of the map. Since we know that the AI will always target an advanced guard tower, and nukes, for whatever reason, can't blow up sandbags, all you gotta do is collect enough cash after you've locked the enemy out, build an advanced guard tower, and pause your uncle. You know, nobody ever mentions it, but I, th I think the silo is also a pro move when doing this quote-unquote strategy. It gives you just enough, like, a view just to expand more upon your sandbag empire. Now, I know that uh, while we do see silos, and we do see that silo, like, it seems like the money in silos go down, I swear, AI always has some way of just, like, constantly repairing its stuff. And I think there's there'll be a, a really good example of that sort of um, action, quote-unquote, by the AI uh, in quite some time, but... I still think it's like very apparent at uh, how it kind of cheats. So there's also a limitation on uh, that favors us this time around, although because of the sandbags. It not really the um, the biggest of deals, where the AI also will suffer from um, poor harvester pathfinding. Now I'm not entirely sure what like triggers it. I I believe it's because the AI is like slowly running out of money. Um, but the AI has like a list of certain uh, certain buildings it will sell and certain ones that it won't, just in an effort of like getting money. And I guess it kind of knows that there's no um, way to defend. I don't know. I figure it's just like a desperation with regards to not having enough cash. It it actually kind of messes with me because. Uh, you'll see that I lose that infantry, 
It's because they sold the obelisk alight, and three of the infantry managed to hop the sandbags in, like, during that animation. I, I will admit, it, it took me, I think, at least, like, one viewing, like, after the fact, to just go, like, oh, right, <laughs> they, like, a sold building kind of did that to me. Construction complete. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Affirmative. Yes, sir. Moving out. Building. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Affirmative. Yes, affirmative. Yes, sir. Acknowledge. Yes, sir. Moving out. Now I'm sure there's something out there that might say like, oh well, you know, you could you could probably beat this with you know four mammoth tanks, we'll get more. You might not be wrong, but I've been playing, like at this point, I've been playing this map, this map specifically, for like the better part of an hour and like a quarter. I kind of wanted to be over, so I'm just going to go with the overkill route, really. So once again, because I haven't looked into the code, I'm not 100% sure if the AI gets uh, nukes replenished on a time basis, if there are a couple triggers uh, involved, or if it's like a, you know, a loop event, it gets a certain amount and then it's done. I would probably suspect it just gets a refill every, you know, the normal recharge time, but... Again, haven't looked into it. Ah, the classic, I'm not stuck in here with you, you're stuck in here with me. I feel like that line would have been a lot better if in the movie it was said with a mammoth tank. So this is the classic mop-up, but I think it's important to actually like inspect the nod base we have in front of us. There is quite a number of defenses here. I don't really see like the player being able to bust through this just with you know a handful of orcas and some good feelings. Sure, there's always the mention of like these levels are built for the the experienced player, the professional, the hardcore, the invested. I can see it, but know this just seems harsh I think the most annoying part is that all these bases are smart in the sense that they've always got the construction yard way at the back This is probably another really good um, example of the AI just being really good at selling its stuff. In fact, it's too good. Like, under most circumstances, unless you happen to be bringing to bear so much firepower that you're going to one-shot whatever you're targeting anyways, the AI is just really good at being able to look at something and immediately sell it. Obviously it has no limitations, like no player limitations, it can control everything at the same time. Um, 
But it is interesting to see just how rapid it can do such a thing. Or rapidly, I guess I should say. Regardless, it's still, again, very interesting. Because, for the most part, like, you, you have to really be a an experienced player at this game to know when you can, when you can't, or when you should sell a building. Especially a defensive one. And I don't necessarily mean should as in like should you just like get your money or anything. But more of in a combat situation you really need to be specific on whether or not selling it has a higher benefit than it living for say four more seconds and dealing damage. Especially since there are a lot of cases where it gets pretty tight. Now, truth be told, I don't really care at, like what exactly these infantry could do. It's more, it's more the fact that, <coughs> excuse me, it's more the fact that I want them like moving. <laughs> Also, that was just rude, I know. I have no regrets. But I want at least that flamethrower guy to know I'll be thinking about him. That's probably the only good thing about the Ion Cannon being so limited in its area of effect. Whatever you do choose to die, it's probably earned it. Mana tanks were faster. Oh well, I'm sure somebody's gone out there and modded the rules.ini file and just given mana tanks the speed of Humvees. Made them the cost of minigunners and just watched them like wreak havoc. Oh yeah! Uh, last Sam site gives us airstrike. Where were these guys the entire friggin' map? Thank <laughs> you.